every day. It just feels like we have chances to score, chances to win, and we just don't. I mean, we won yesterday, but whatever. At this point, it's like I, I was talking to some other friends who are fans, and we're almost like mad when they win. You almost like want them to lose and do so horribly that like something just changes. Yeah. It just feels like after the last couple of years, it's been, you know, two and a half or so years of like this group of guys just underperforming. Uh, and, you know, the message is always like, oh, it's it'll happen. It'll happen. They're too talented yeah. not to. And then just doesn't happen. <laughs> Dude, I already got a title for you for a video. Fi how to fix the Toronto Blue Jays. Like, dude, I'm telling you, you could make that. It's just going to be, be like, thing. Uh, fire everyone. <laughs> at, at, yeah. <laughs> just an Acme, like Roadrunner, uh, just dropping like a stick of dynamite on the team. And just <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know. It is what good. it is. They we'll see. We have a stretch now of like we play the White Sox, the Tigers, the White Sox again, and then the Pirates. So it's like this is the time. That's a good that's the time to turn it around. This Those, is that's the a time. slump busting two weeks right there. There is one team that has scored less runs than us in the American League, and it I is saw that today. The Chicago White Sox. So I'll take it a step further. There's uh that's in baseball too. From what I recall. Yeah, that's probably second correct. Least, yeah. Yeah. We just don't score runs, man. It is. The, like, who's is the hitting coach the same dude from 2021? Yes, I think. That's some, interesting. Some of some of them are the, are the same. That the main guy, Guillermo Martinez, I think is the same, but we've like we promoted one of the guys from AAA. And I mean, they brought in Don Mattingly before last season, but I think that almost made seems like it's made things worse. He's our offensive coordinator, whatever that means for a baseball team. Slap the ball That's the other stupid. way instead That's of stu what do they do? <laughs> what what do they do that the hitting coach doesn't do or the manager doesn't do? I don't know because From it seemed to me the offensive coordinator sounds like a football term where you choose the plays. I know the manager chooses the lineup, but you are you gonna have you're gonna hire Don Mattingly to construct the same fucking lineup or different lineups every day. Yeah. It's hilarious. I don't know. I think it has to do with like their approach versus whoever their the opposing pitcher is. But you know, you look at if you look at the the the, the stats of like um which three players pull the ball in the air the most. And they're like our three best hitters and like David Schneider, Danny Jansen and Dalton Varsho. Like they pull the ball <laughs> in the air. Yep. You know, I, I, I have no idea what's going on with Bo Bichette. He's just like become one of the worst hitters in baseball this year. It's actually mind boggling. That is nuts, dude. That's actually nuts. Yeah. I don't get it. Don't I don't really yeah, I just don't get it. Do not get it. It's tough, man. It's tough. But a lot's happened. I mean, it's been what? Like almost a month since the last time we sat down. It's three weeks. Three, three weeks, weeks, man. Or three and a half weeks about. It's I've been busy. I'm sure you've been busy too. Oh yeah. Summertime so. starting. My kid started his first year at T ball. Hey, that's just, what's up, dude. You know, getting into Excellent, the end of the year. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> that's awesome, dude. That's mm -hmm. really cool. Super, super cool. Yeah, so what is, uh, I don't know, what's stuck out to you in the last few weeks? I mean, it seems like a lot's been going on. Dude, uh, Shota Imanaga for sure. Greatest Him. pitcher of all time he's or what? He's been crazy, dude. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's doing historic things. L.A. De La Cruz doing crazy shit. Uh, the Cubs or the AL Central being a lot more competitive than we all thought. And the NL Central being, well, pretty awful. Cardinals specifically. I feel yeah. like they they are like are – we could talk about five teams that could um, – that should rebuild or are facing a rebuild. <laughs> 
Yeah, where do the Cardinals, oh, no. like, where do you go? You spent some money on your rotation. Sonny Gray has been performing, but this, I don't know. They Paul yeah. Goldschmidt's cooked. Yeah, what? Where did that, like, it's crazy, like, how good he's, he's been consistently so good, even as he's gotten, like, older into his mid-30s. Um, yeah, I know he's, how old I know he's 36, he? but yeah, 36, he's 36. Like, think for yeah 36 year old first baseman especially now that they have a dh Just spot you could MVP. use here yeah i and don't know jordan walker like uh, i feel like we should have hit record oh, i've been recording oh good shit never mind well, well done well done bravo bravo I've been, hello I've everyone been, i've been recording i didn't do an intro we were just we we're just getting into it i dude i love that i love <laughs> not doing an intro i can't tell you how much i love that. i suppose i could have but let you know that i we were recording no, no 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 this is better this is better this is way better 100 percent. like i am all about it ellie de la cruz has been going off i just maybe i shouldn't have swore oh no, i it's, swore a couple times fun. My it's job okay. will hate me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but dude, yeah, Shota Imanaga, the Cardinals sucking. I mean, of course, Paul Skeens happened. Skeens in the last three weeks. Skeens. Skeens is Skeens here. Happened. They finally called him up. He's been looking pretty good. Especially last start. Speaking of Shota Imanaga of the Cubs, Paul Skeens, two straight starts against the Cubs. First one, not as good as the second one, of course. But dude, he's just been I mean, what he started he started his second start with seven straight strikeouts. That's not bad. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> just all right. casual on on pace for a twenty seven strikeout game after two innings. MLB the show numbers what, there. That is MLB the show. Actually, that is is that MLB the show numbers? Against the CPU, maybe? Yeah, like rookie. Do you still CPU. strike people? Okay. Okay. Yeah. I what think what mo- stuck out to you? Oh, or, well, it's ahead, it's hard for me to like not focus on the Blue Jays like that, and everything just <laughs> sticks out as stinking it, stinking it up. Um, you know, I we look at that. like I think the NL West. I think has kind of been weird, really weird. Like Houston's finally starting starting to turn it around a bit the last week or two. Uh, I mean, I still think Texas is poised to like go on a crazy run at some point. The Mariners are hanging on to that coming. division by a thread. Um, Dude, it, yeah, that's that's turning into the weakest division, I feel like. Yeah, for now. The weakest? I think. Yeah, that's so interesting. Second half is going to be big, I think, for Houston and Texas. I think they'll both come. I on. agree. And I agree. I think, yeah. Like Seattle. Just pitches so well. They're kind of like the Blue Jays last year. They're although the Blue Jays never were leading the division, but they played overall. Their record was not yeah. bad. They made the playoffs. So, um, dude, Seattle needs to buy really bad. Like they they need to buy some bats this deadline well, or yeah. soon because they have that. Re- their pitching staff is just so good. Like it's it, too good not to like try this year. Yeah, it was. So, the moves they made this off season still don't make sense to me. They haven't made sense. What two months? We're two months in. About yeah, it, and it's like like they had bats. Crazy. I mean, I, I know Tay Oscar was a free agent, but like you had Suarez. I mean, even Kellenic uh, was pretty good for them last year, and you like you didn't really improve. You're looking to cut down on strikeouts, and I think they still have like two of the top four guys in the AL who have struck out the most. I'm pretty sure there's a couple guys yeah. up there. Leading the, yeah, leading I think the their league. best hitter this year has been Josh Rojas. I mean, who saw that coming? Yeah, I mean, Julio's – I mean, we'll see. If Julio has a second half like he did last year, then uh, that'll help a lot. But, yeah, I think yeah, the, Ast- the Astros and the Rangers are both just too good. And once the Astros pitching – or the Rangers, sorry. Once the Rangers pitching staff is all healthy in, like, July and August, I don't know. They're coming. I think they're coming. They haven't even like started hitting yet. Corey Seager hasn't even really him and Acuna basically are like the same player in different leagues, like coming off MVP worthy seasons, super slow starts. Um, Corey Seager, I saw him. He hit a bomb. What yesterday, I think, or the day before. And Acuna had a three hit game today. So maybe they're both turning it around. 
Cunha also had that. But was man. it yesterday he had that play in the outfield where he just like it was just, it was yesterday. Just didn't just catch terrible. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think he lost in the eyes, but either way, he said like that's just terrible that he should have caught it. I agree. But it happens. Yeah, my it happens. My pick of him uh going back to back for NL MVP is not looking good at all. Um, but my number two pick is looking pretty good. Mookie Betts. This guy's unreal. He's looking pretty good. He, Shohei, yeah, looking gonna, good too. I was gonna say if he can uh if he can, you know, keep up with Otani, it'll be a tight race between those two. I mean, I don't think yeah. anybody else is gonna the way the season's going so far, it they it's gonna be hard to catch either of those two guys even now. It's only yeah, like we're not even those in June two, yet, but yeah, those two are the front runners for sure. No one's really no one's really come close to those two except I feel like maybe third place right now. Off, off, this is off the top of my head, by the way. I would say Ellie De La Cruz. And but he's not he's doing historic things or on the pace for historic things, but he doesn't have the whole like whole season under him the yeah. type the caliber of full season that Mookie and Shohei are yeah, I mean he overall. could steal like a hundred bases <laughs> but if he yeah. can't if he keeps his power numbers up like he started off this season pretty good I don't know how many home runs he's at right now but he is a nine I think nine? Well, that's not bad nine. pretty more, solid more than anyone on the Blue Jays of course yeah uh, <laughs> I think he's actually pacing quicker than Acuna was last year at this point. Definitely in the steals. Yeah. It's going to be close with the home runs. That's crazy. He, already has, he already has 30. 30, 30. steals I know. Yeah, that's nuts. Nuts. That's crazy, man. But I think just like, yeah, the overall season that Mookie's having and then like Otani's, like those two guys, it's so crazy that that's just like they're on the same team now. It is like they're one, really two. Is. I feel like we never really got the full, like how many full seasons of Trout and Otani did we have where they both played like 80% or more of the season? Like, did we even get one out of six years? 2020 for sure. 2020 for sure. And then I don't know if we maybe 2019 was, I mean, we didn't when Shohei was like at the peak of his powers. Right. I mean, you could say, yeah. He came into his own in 2021, and since then, we definitely didn't see Trout. And I think since the last time we talked, that's when, in between the last time we talked, Trout went on the IL. We didn't talk about that. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I've said this question before, and this was before Trout even got hurt, but who finishes with a better career wins above replacements, Mookie Betts or Mike Trout? And I'm starting to think Mookie Betts might – end up overtaking him at some point. I've been yeah. looking and like Mookie is aging like a fine wine. Um knock on wood, no crazy injury history that I can think of and he's probably been banged up a time or two, maybe gone on the IL once or twice, but I haven't I, I just don't know. Like I know he's getting older, so that time I, I I hope it doesn't come, but there may be a time where he does start yeah, to mean, get banged up a little, a little bit more. But let's see what's his lowest 31. amount of games played. Mookie's lowest, um, one twenty two in twenty twenty one. That's not bad. And then his second lowest was one thirty six. Yeah, the year. He and won then MVP. all the other ones he's played. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. He must have just he I mean he didn't must have. He did have a crazy year that year. And he has 68.2 B war. Yeah. Trout has trailing 80, Mike Trout. 86.3. Trout's what like a year and something older than him. A year and some change. So the yeah, well, it's gonna be tight. Like the Mookie could the gap is getting shorter. Oof. And even when Trout has been on the field this year and the year before, it's not like we're seeing an MVP player. We're seeing a very good player, but we're not seeing that MVP type stuff that we used that we're used to seeing. And last year, 
131 OPS plus this year when he was on the field, 139 OPS plus. Very, very good, but not the Mike Trout that we're all used to. Yeah, it's uh, it's too bad. He like it seemed like he, you know, he 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 hit like the first home run of the season. Things were going so well that first month, and uh, it's, it's so just disappointing, man. It's, it's just so bad. But I don't know. If you're an LA baseball fan, just go to the Dodgers games. <laughs> yeah, for real, for real. I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind going to that park. I would like the Angel. I feel like the Angel Stadium looks really, really nice on TV. Don't know how it looks in person, but obviously, the, like the rocks and the waterfalls out in uh, left center look very, very nice. Yeah, I've heard people say like Dodger Stadium isn't that nice in person. Uh, I think maybe it's because it's like getting a little bit older and stuff now. But I don't know. Like it's just the. I think it's just like the setting uh, and being in California. Agreed. Like when you get good weather. Uh, it would be a, a, an awesome place to go. I haven't been to there at all yet either, but same. I'd like to. Only I've driven through California, and that was a miserable experience. At least until you get to Northern California, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah, LA. I've only been to in the winter. I've been to like I've been to San Francisco. Uh, I mean, that pole park is amazing. It's so nice. That look. That ballpark does look beautiful. Um, I went to Kaufman this past weekend. I've actually the two times I've been to a Royals game this year, I've seen Cole Reagan starts. Both of them have been great. One of them was cut in half due to rain, but and I'm sorry to say it was against your Blue Jays. Yeah, that was BS, but he just man. Super good. <laughs> I don't think he's allowed to run in um, when I've been in, in attendance. So Royals staff, if you're listening to this. You want some good luck for some Cole Reagan starts? Holla at your boy. <laughs> I got you. Sorry, my eyes are like killing me, man. These these allergies this year have been beating me up. Speaking of Kansas City Royal starters, though, how about what Seth Lugo has been doing this year? Like this guy's Dude, been unreal. He's been unreal. It's it's crazy. Like when. I think of the dichotomy of pitchers this year. Uh, what Seth Lugo has a below two ERA. I feel like we have seen so many pitchers at like at both ends of the spectrum where it's like there's plenty. It seems like there's more pitchers than ever right now with an ERA under two at this point of the year. And then seeing a bunch of other pitchers with like ERAs over five or six. I don't know. That's just yeah. like. It seems like it, but yeah, dude, like Seth Lugo has been killing it. For starters, there's four in the NL, Imanaga, Suarez, Assad, and Reynaldo Lopez. And then the AL, we have – there's two of qualified starters. Anyway, Scooble, Seth Lugo. But, like, man, if you even if you look at, the like, the top ten, and, I mean, we're just kind of – I'm just looking at ERA right now. But, like, if you look at this, the names on here, these are a lot of guys you wouldn't <laughs> expect to see. Like John Gray, I don't know if I would put him in the top ten. Blanco, John Gray, Reese Olson, Cutter Crawford, Tanner Houck, Luis Heal, Clark Schmidt, and then Corbin Burns is tenth. Like I think Corbin Burns might have been the only pitcher that I would have said like at the beginning of the year that he'd be on that list. Yeah, and then like even right after that, you have like Eric Fetty and Yusei Kikuchi, Brady Eric Singer, Fetty. Tyler Anderson and Jose Barrios. So that rounds up the top 15. It's funny because even if I looked, obviously, crazy. Blue Jays guy here, but even if I looked at the Blue Jays, I wouldn't have picked Kikuchi or Barrios to lead our team in ERA. I both, I thought they'd both, both have like good seasons, but like Kevin Gossman it's, yeah. is. Yeah, what's happened to him, man? He's not been great this <laughs> he, year. It he? sounds like he should have probably started on the IL. He kind of said that the other day. So he was kind of he didn't really get a spring training. He pitched three innings in spring on like That's the second the second last day. Um and then he's uh he's had some he started off kind of shaky. I mean he's had some some pretty decent starts, but I mean he's sitting at a negative 0.64 right now, so not ideal. Um yikes. 
Yeah, where? Ooh, ooh. If I look at his. Uh... It's gonna say, like. I think Scoobal. Ooh, Darvish is. I didn't realize Darvish had such a good ERA. I would say. Yeah. Uh, Scoobal and Corbin Burns is pro are probably the only two dudes that I would have said would be on that list. Javier Assad. Dude, they, the Cubs have two of those dudes, and both of them ERA are below 1.5. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. That's kind of nuts. They've been you know, the Cubs having two, and then Seattle doesn't have a single guy in the top 15. But then they have 16, 17, and 20. Gilbert Bryce Miller. Yeah, and, that's uh, solid. Luis I mean, Castillo. three in the top 20. <laughs> George Kirby isn't even doing like George Kirby things either. He's got like an ERA close to four, right? I think. Yeah, they're just. It's been a weird year. It's been a weird year. I feel it like. It has, dude. Oh, Blue Jays. Oh, Chicago. Oh, yeah, especially, dude. Colorado still has one of the worst records in baseball despite. That seven game winning streak, <laughs> which is hilarious to me. What th that just proves baseball is the weirdest sport. It is, it's such a strange phenomenon. Austin Gomber, the um, savior in the Nolan Arenado deal, is leading the team in war with a 2.0 wins above replacement. And, ooh. They got a couple guys hitting a little bit. OPS plus is north of 100. Talk about like, okay. Now I'm just looking at the Colorado Rockies roster right now. I know we're going on like different tangents of things, but dude, I talk about one of the more disappointing players in baseball so far this year. Nolan Jones. Um, I know he's on the IL right now, but 94 at bats, only an OPS plus of 43. Oof. I didn't realize he was that bad. That is. I didn't either. That is just mega, mega disappointing. Joining Chris Bryant with an OPS plus of 47. Man, I really thought he was going to turn around, but he is on the IL. Only 47 at bats, but I mean, I just don't see him ever recovering to be an even decent player at this point. It's just hard to imagine. Yeah, what a. It's so crazy. Like, you'd think even. Going to Colorado would like help you out. <laughs> like you'd yeah. be able to put up, you know, at least one pretty solid season or something. But yeah, it's kind of the fall off of Chris Bryant is just unfortunate. It's been tough to watch. It's a good thing I haven't been watching, just been listening about it, just been reading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. Like my uh my mom and my my parents just went to a game in Colorado this they were visiting family there and then they came back to visit me but they saw colorado beat texas beautiful ballpark by the way if anyone ever gets a chance head to course head to course right. please watch some balls fly watch them fly yo watch them fly is there any like Anything else? Or we could say, who would get your way too early MVP awards right now for both leagues? Mm, Mookie Betts. Yeah. I, I think, think uh, NL is super easy, but AL might be a little bit. Gunner, maybe? I Gunner's think been pretty be. unreal. Um, He's been nuts, man. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think. Like, Cleveland's been playing well, but nobody really stands out to me on that team. Um, no. No one has really stood out to me either. Josh Naylor, maybe. He's been having a really good year. Stephen Kwan leads that team in war, though. Josh Naylor yeah, already has, like, like, like... Kyle Tucker's having a really good season. But the yeah, Astros Kyle are Tucker. not doing well. I mean, Soto. Probably Gunner or Soto. Yeah. Dude, Aaron Judge is coming back too. Like, how fast was that resurgence? 
Yeah, his he's, OPS he's, is like right around where Soto's is now after just like a week. Yeah. Yeah. He's probably going to end up leading the AL in home runs. <laughs> I still think like he might. Like he's, well, I mean, he's only two back right now. Like all of a sudden he has 13. Seems yeah. Like he that's had like he, almost yeah. not none forever. And now he's got 13. Um, man, dude, they're doing it, man. The Yankees are having a good – Giancarlo Stanton's even hitting a bit. Like, not just for power. He's got 11 home runs. Crazy that he hasn't – or has he? I don't think he's hit the IL yet. Has he? Mm, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Him, it's... Judge, Soto, all with 11-plus bombs. Like, that's a – that's a solid three. They don't even have uh, Garrett Cole back yet and their pitching rotation is looking solid like Luis Heel has been huge for them yeah I don't like it <laughs> I want them to be bad it's crazy I did pick them to win the division even without Garrett Cole but yeah that's just nuts I mean they're 33 and 15 just right behind the Philadelphia Phillies is having the best record in baseball. Do we need to talk about them? I feel like we should talk. I feel about like them we do bit. need to talk about the Phillies, the Philadelphia or the Yankees, or the Phillies. The Phillies. <laughs> you were talking about the Yankees. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I, people thought the Phillies would be good, but not best team in baseball. Good. No, definitely not. They've been getting some like major, major contributions. From their, especially well, their starting rotation, man. Yeah, and Alec Bohm just deciding to be the best third baseman in all of baseball this year. Crazy, <laughs> man. He's been he's been so good. He's already got eighteen doubles. He's still hitting three thirty. He's leading their team in OPS plus. Ranger Suarez w- leading their team in wins above replacement. And dude, it seems like Bryce Harper hasn't even turned it on yet, but he's. Quiet, quietly having an OPS of 890. And, I mean, their their strength of schedule hasn't been incredible, but you still have to win those games. You got to win those games. You have to. Like, I'm looking at their uh, – even when they have – they're they have like four losses in their last 20 games or something, and all of them have been by – Two or less runs. They've been absolutely just destroying the competition. Like, that's just what good teams do uh, against bad teams. You got to win against bad teams because you know what? Other good teams lose against bad teams too. And they're not. I knew Suarez was pitching well. I didn't realize like how good their teams, like that he started nine games and he's eight no in those nine games. I didn't get it. They just like haven't lost a game he started basically. I mean, I don't know if the other one, no, if the no decision was a loss or not, but. That's crazy. I mean, yeah. I don't think people saw him being the ace of the staff this year with Wheeler and Nola there. No, not at all. I mean, it, it's going to be interesting to see if they keep it up. Like, it's I as a baseball fan, I would love for Bryce Harper to get a ring, and who knows, this could be the year they could win the division. Like, they're up on the Braves by five games. Potentially six after today. Braves lost the first game against San Diego today, so I mean the it's they can absolutely build upon their lead. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see kind of how how that division shapes up for the you know going up to the All Star break and then the second half because it's still hard to. Count out the Braves, obviously. Mm, oh, very then, much so. It's yeah, still I mean, um, like we'll see. You can talk about their strength of schedule all you want, but I don't know. They're you still got to tw- win those games because I mean they're tw- twenty games over five hundred right now. That's crazy. Yeah, you can maybe talk about their strength of schedule if they haven't just been pounding the hell out of their opposite opposition, and then when they do lose games, it's by not a very big amount like it's 
even like these are big league teams. It's not like they're going out there against double A teams, thirty four and fourteen. Right. What they they started the season eight and eight, so they've gone twenty six and six over the last thirty two. I don't care who you're playing. Like that is just difficult to do. Yeah, like even if if they went five hundred the rest of the year, they would finish with ninety one wins, like which definitely would get them in the yeah. playoffs in the NL. Who knows what are the if- odds they just go five hundred from here on out? Not very good. Right, not They're good. probably going to do better, <laughs> but way who, better. But again, you never know. That's the beauty of baseball, and that's why things are crazy. Because the Braves could go like twenty and five in a month, yeah. and the Phillies could go like ten and twenty. Right? Like it. It just could. It could happen. Absolutely. Things, things can switch, which is like you know why everybody says you know at the. I, I'm gonna always. Keep going back to the Jays just because that's just what I pay the most attention to. But yep. <laughs> there, our GM Ross Atkins had a little press conference the other day. Dalton Varshow also just went yard for them to take a two-one lead over the White Sox. So MVP nice. of the Jays this year, Dalton Varshow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. our GM had a press conference, yes. and you know, it's uh, the whole message is you know it's early, it's still early. I believe in this team, and you know, like it is, but. I think for some teams like them, it's it's not too it's not too early. Worst you know, start, yeah, yeah. It wasn't too early for the Padres to go get Luis Ariz. I don't know. That was a sneaky good move for them. Very sneaky good move. Even though he's like a, another infielder, but they they needed a guy who could get on base, who could hit, who could maybe set the table a little bit. Yeah, like yeah, you bring up a great point. Like, why wait until the deadline? Just like, let's watch us struggle until the deadline and then panic buy or panic sell. Like, yeah. why not see an opportunity, go for it in May? That way, maybe we can just close the gap a little bit to where we want to get a little bit earlier instead of just like buying late July and then be like, yo, you got two months to figure this out. You better start right now. Yeah, I think like now you the, four months. the thing is they, you know, if when you trade earlier in the season, you usually end up giving up more, it seems. You can kind of get better deals sometimes once people are ready to get let go of stuff. But I don't know. I mean, if it's going to make your team better, sometimes you just got to pay the price you got to pay. Yeah, especially when you are that sure of what you need and like they definitely needed that now they have a ton of people who can uh play second base not the stereotypical dh but he's still gonna serve a purpose and the padres what are they right now they are they're doing all right 24 and 24 yeah not terrible not terrible. F- playing 500. They, I mean, I, I feel like Manny Machado hasn't even really started to hit. Fernando Tatis has been cold. Xander Bogarts has looked terrible. So those guys turn it around. They've gotten some good pitching performance out of you, Darvish. Dylan Cease has been good. Michael King has been really up and down. It seems like a, it's either a great start or just a dud. Maybe Joe Musgrove does a little bit better when he gets back from the IL. And I mean, that's a could be a decent team, could be a wild card team. Like, you know, you're not performing extremely up to par when your best hitter is Jerks and Profar, who <laughs> has been just really, really good this year. I mean, they're. Their two best players, OPS wise, have been him and Jake Cronenworth. I don't know if anyone saw that coming. I didn't. No, and if you did see that I coming, I would like your your <laughs> choices for lottery numbers because you're probably going to hit the jackpot at some point. <laughs> oh, I mean, it's still right now they're sitting in the third wild card, which is kind of crazy with the 25-24 uh, record. I mean, it's just like, yes, yeah, there's some just super good teams and then just a whole bunch of nothing before you get to that next tier i feel like in the nl at least 
Yeah, I mean, the AL's kind of kind of similar. I mean, like after the Royals, so you have like the Yankees, Guardians, Mariners right now. I mean, the Mariners even, they're only three games over, not nothing crazy. Um, but like the Twins are yeah. in the third wild card, 24 and 22 record. And then it's just like, well, even somehow the Jays are five games under and we're only three and a half back of the wild second wild card. So a lot, a lot can happen with those like, like eight teams <laughs> over the next oh, 110, yeah. 15 games or whatever is left. Uh, Very much so. Yeah, it's going to be. Twins. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a thing until the end. We're definitely going to see chaos. They've definitely built the playoffs so that we do see chaos one way or another right before the playoffs, right before the teams are set. Um, speaking of the Twins, man, they um, what they had to do to get to third place, what they went on that ridiculous run where they, they won 11 straight games. I think it was 12 in a row. 11 or 12, 12 and they won like 15 of 17 or That's maybe a lot. more. And they are currently on a six-game losing streak. So <laughs> tale of two streaks for them. And, and, and that sucks too because you go on a whole big winning streak to get back in the picture for the division, and then you just kind of give it right back with six straight losses. That is just rough. Yeah, they're they're a weird team. Like, I don't know. Their offense is good. I don't. I don't think overall their pitching is anything great. A couple good, like obviously, like every team's gonna have some some good guys here and there. But uh, I'm kind of surprised to see Detroit in fourth. Like, I I mean, I know they're still maybe yeah experience on that team isn't there necessarily and they're what you know they're 500 so again who knows what can happen but like they started off really well and i thought they'd kind of keep pace with cleveland kansas city i didn't expect to be you know 10 games over this early in the season yeah, 10 but, games over is a pretty that's pretty wild for the royals Although, like, I know they whooped How? the Jays many times this year, but, like, even watching those games, I'm like, this team, like, watching the Royals, I'm like, they they don't look amazing, but, like, whatever. That, I mean, it doesn't matter. You win you win baseball games, you win baseball games. I'm not yeah. trying to take anything away from them. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Their lineup just – their lineup doesn't look great. It, but they're pitching, just like you said, with Seth Lugo, Cole Reagans has been good. And, of course, they got Bobby Wood Jr. And Salvador Perez is having a really, really strong – Really strong year. It's kind of crazy what he's doing, but there's only four guys on that team with an OPS plus over a hundred, and two of those guys have an OPS plus of just 104 and 107. So it's very, very like very top heavy what they're doing. They're getting it done on the mound. And you know, they're just picking and choosing basically. They they haven't gone on any on any crazy streaks. They did have a seven game winning streak. I think their biggest losing streak is three. So they're doing a great job of just like when they do lose a game, they're bouncing back pretty well, which is what you need to do yeah. when you do Stop lose. Stop the bleeding, win a couple. Yeah. Who else is doing just um, – I, I, think, I think you're right. Like Detroit being 500 is kind of nuts. I mean – I just th I think they're also top heavy in just a different way. Riley Green, Kerry Carpenter, Mark Canna are really the only guys hitting for them. Spencer Torkelson has looked really bad. Uh, I think he's kind of turning it around. But Colt Keith, their rookie second baseman, he's been awful. Jake Rogers hasn't done well compared to what he did last year. And of course, Javier Baez is doing Javier Baez things. <laughs> Which is bad. You don't want him doing obvious. <laughs> which, which is not yeah, good. Which is not. Yeah. Which is. Yeah. Is, Normally, you say you, this guy's doing this guy's things. It's a good thing. It's just robbing them. Not robbing now. the tigers of yeah. hundreds of millions of dollars. That's rough, man. 
That's so rough. OPS plus of 48. 48. 60 last year. Is, yeah, how's, his, how's his defense? Is his defense still at least good? If, I wonder if he has a positive war. Let, let's see. I want nope, to see. He does not have a positive war. Where is he at as far as? Let's see. Standard fielding. His range, his fielding range is, I thought it would be good. Last year, I'm looking at baseball savant. I mean, last year, fielding range, outs above average, uh, 95th percentile. This year, 5th percentile, negative 4. Yikes. He, has, he also had two defensive runs saved last year. Already at negative 3 this year. Yeesh. Yikes. He's a, Talk about he has a, a fast bat. Quality. That's it. <laughs> now that they added bat speed, man, he's got a fast bat. <laughs> but nothing well else. Well done. Well nothing done. Else. Oh, that's man. we can slow his bat down a little bit. Maybe he can actually like wait on some off speed. Uh, it's crazy. crazy. You just watch him. You just like. I mean, I don't watch many Tigers games, but I've. Ne- I, it's rare that I see a really good hobby bias <laughs> highlight anymore. If it is, it's defensive. I think he had like a five RBI game the other day when they whooped on somebody, but um, that's probably the only five RBIs he'll have all month. Yeah, probably. He's. I think he's got 19 right now. Oh, 20, my bad. Six steals, though. Six steals, so he's got that going for him, which is nice. <laughs> man, it's And it's so weird. This is doing such a bad thing to his career numbers, man. Um, his OPS, his career OPS plus now is 96. His OPS is 737, which is just, I mean, that's nothing great. His on base percentage is under 300 for his career. I mean, I don't know if you could ask someone in 2020 if this would be his career numbers path, if they would have just been just mind blown. I feel like they would have. Yeah, it's hard to have imagined that this is where it would kind of end up for him. Like him and Chris Bryant, like after that 2016 run they had, and then even like 2017, they were still pretty good. Uh, and then just for like to see where like all of those players have kind of ended up. Uh, I mean, Rizzo's been decent in New York, but like, out of, and Schwar- I mean, Schwarber's had some monster years, but yeah, he kind of thought all those guys would kind of go on they all sign these you know big contracts and go play and everywhere else and didn't really yeah, know weren't people weren't people like crucifying the cubs basically for not signing any of them long term turns out maybe they were onto something yeah or who know like i don't know what there's all of their careers would look like if they would have stayed with the cubs would they have continued going on that trajectory where they're going down and down and down, or would it have been different? I mean, I don't know. No one's ever going to know. Yeah, no one's gonna it's find so out, hard to say. To it's like you just, yeah, you just never know. You just never know what it was that clicked with all of them in the first place where they all just like young and people didn't know kind of how to approach them yet. That might have been what, that's, but there's a good chance. You know, now it's now we're all looking it's, back like, oh, Hey, they they won one. They they got they got they got a ring. So <laughs> they got the one. They got the one. So maybe worth it. Prob. I mean, it has to be worth hey, it if you're if, the Cubs and you've gone we, so long without. We could have got one ring with Bo and Vladdy and George Springer, and then they all went to do whatever. I would be a pretty happy guy. <laughs> true. Very true. <laughs> Dude, George Springer. I mean, is he cooked? Is I don't he know, man. Now? I I don't know. He just looks. He looks cooked most of the time. <laughs> he still plays really well does, defensively. It's, been... it's I don't know. He just looks like off balance every swing he takes. It looks like he's swinging so hard that he's going to fall over. Like he just doesn't square the ball up like he he used to. Like the first his first couple seasons in Toronto, he, like he was really good. Like at 2021 he only yeah. ended up playing like half the year. But he had like 22 homers in less than 80 games. Like I was like, "Okay, here we go. That's legit. And then t- 22, he was still like decent. And then, yeah, last year and this year, it's just been like, man, it's watching him. 
I don't know. I don't know what it is. He is older than a lot of people think, I think. He's older than, like, I, I only know how old he is because I've been following the last couple of years. But if when I looked up to see how old he was in, like, 2019 when he was on those Houston teams, I was like, oh, man, I thought he was, like, 24, 25. He's 29, almost 30. Yeah. So he's he's getting up there in age, too. And that's I would say that's definitely playing a factor. But oh, man, yeah, part it's just, of it. It's hard sure, to see but... that drop off, like, yeah, you Almost, don't expect like, him to have like he had like a career 800 OPS probably before last season, uh, and then just to watch that, yeah, like I don't know where he, he he's probably at like what, like I don't even know 560 or something like that for the season this year. Five five seventy six this year, seven thirty two last year, which is not like what you want. Eight fourteen the year before, and nine oh seven in twenty twenty one. So it's just been like. A steady, steady drop off. You could say, I mean, I guess you could say it's a little bit dramatic because it's been like 75 ish points at least every single year. But it's just, it's disappointing. It's yeah, not slugging. At this point, like, no, no if you want to trade trade him, like, what, you can't. what he, value are you? We're paying him like get? $26 million a year or something. Like, I, nobody's taking him on, I don't think, right now. Yeah. You'd have to. To like eat a lot of that money, and he would just ha- he would have to like pop off for two weeks and be like, "Yo, this is the time. This is the time to get yeah. something for him." He's popping off these two weeks. He's back. We got to convince people he's back so they can take him. Well, we finally moved him down. Like, there's been that's been a, another point of contention for Jays fans this year is that he continued to be our leadoff hitter uh, up until about like three games ago. Um. And now he's like batting. I think we've dropped him down to sixth now. So we started the season. It was, you know, George, Vlad, Bo were the top three. And Bo has gone down a little bit. George is now down to sixth. Justin Turner has just been starting to be trash. He started off the season so good, too. And all of a sudden, his OPS yeah, plus is under 100. I don't know. I don't know, man. It's just... Hey, if if Davis Schneider and Danny Jansen can carry us for the rest of the year, and you know, sing, singles machine Vladimir Guerrero Jr. What a singles machine! Eleven extra base hits all year. It's crazy, man. He like he just rockets the ball through. What the happened? I don't know. Like, like it can't be. It seems like again. Uh, I'm sitting here in a chair. In the middle of the day, not playing baseball, not coaching baseball. So you, but you would think he still hits the ball incredibly hard, like as hard as he did in 2021. It has to be just like it seems like it's so simple, just like reach out and grab it. I feel like the hitting coach needs to just. I don't know what he's doing. I I don't know what he's doing, but whatever you told him in 2021, do it again, because obviously nothing has changed with his like skill level as far as hitting the ball hard no he's 99th average exit velo that's just hard hit percentage 99th percentile it's so dumb like his expected slugging is 491 what's his actual slugging percentage 350 i don't know dude yeah gunner henderson is just going crazy though for talking about the al he still, he. I did not think he would at any point lead the league in home runs. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, and it, like just be leading. I know I, there's a great chance he doesn't finish the year leading the the league in home runs, but I never thought he would have as many as he does right now. I thought maybe like okay, he, he had 28 his rookie year. I think it'd be a little bit presumptuous of me to expect like 30 35 because he didn't seem like that type of player just like a mad power hitter he seemed like a more complete hitter but man 15 right now 15 is he gonna is he gonna hit 40 (laughs) he's certainly pacing for it he's having himself like a brady anderson type of year brady anderson not because 
I mean, Brady Anderson, I don't think Brady Anderson ever hit more than 20 in any other season. So that's kind of unfair for me to say Gunner's having a Brady Anderson type of year. But you can say whatever he you might want, in the If it's what you I feel, can. you can say it. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate your support more, <laughs> more than ever. But he could... <laughs> He might be having a Brady Anderson type of year in the fact in the way that he might hit fifty or forty to fifty. That's just let's get Gunner in crazy. the Derby. Gunner Derby. Gunner in the Derby would be electric. Who do you want to see in the Derby Ooh, this mm. year? Uh oh. There's a gnat in front of my like, face. Gunner would be fun. It's in Texas this year. But like Adolis was in there last year, he might end up being. Got to get Seager in there then. Seegs, yeah. Um, get Seager in there. I, I kind of want to see Adolis again, just because I feel like he would just be a hype machine. Yeah, especially for it to be in his home stadium. Yeah, like how Julio was last year, where he just took that adrenaline and just smacked like what forty something in that first round. Yeah. Hey, maybe put him in there too, just to maybe correct his swing or something, because he's not having a great year. I'm trying but to think, like, we're like, year. like maybe like Kyle Tucker could be a fun one in the a, Derby. Um, ah, he could be. Has your Don done it? Like, never your, seen him. I don't think your Don's done it. Honestly, I don't even think they, or maybe he. Maybe they put him in there just because of like the name, and we know he hits bombs. But he's not even having like a great year that you could even put him in the All Star game right now. You're on. So I feel like he may not even get there. Yeah, he's got eight home runs this year. His OPS is seven fifty nine. That is so unlike Jordan. It's hard to like think of guys that haven't already done it. I'm like, like Schwarber would be fun. Yeah, I have no Schwarber's idea. Done it, I haven't you know, watched. Like, yeah, hundred percent. I haven't even watched the home run derby the last like three or four years, just because I don't have cable. I yeah, I watched it last year because I wanted. I was cheering for Vlad, and then he pulled it out, so I was pretty happy with that. Nice. I uh, low key missed the old format. The outs? I'm yep. I miss admiring them. I miss admiring the home runs. Cause you know, like, yeah, you're supposed to wait till the ball lands, but they no one does that. No. You're, no you're one just, does that. You're just going. Like, yeah, it's just it's not as great as it was, in my opinion. Yeah, it's like you don't and you just watch guys get tired now. Like <laughs> by the end of it, yeah. you're just like, ah. Uh, like they're just gassed, which like makes sense. Like you're trying to hit 45 bombs in like four minutes or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. Like crazy. For sure. Yeah. I'm like, who, who's like Ellie would be crazy to see in there. Ellie would be fun. Ellie. Uh, you know, he could go right-handed and then left-handed another time. That's like what uh, like, Adley did last being... year. Did he see? I didn't even know he was in it last year. Yeah, his... I feel like that's not he switched. I think. I don't think it was not mid round. I can't remember. Maybe he did like his main round one, and then when because you get like bonus time if you hit two over four hundred and forty feet. I think, and then he switched. That's right. I love the distance part. Yeah, I, I think that's a great touch. <laughs> Absolute spectacular touch. If I'm being honest. Yeah, I don't know who like who Throw, else is like Devers. I'm trying to think of like who are some guys. Devers would be great. Devers, get him in there. He's been on fire lately. I feel like the Twins have got to have like some guys like maybe like Ryan Jeffers, Jeffers has been going off. Uh, just He's going through the nuts. teams. Like no, no one from the Rays right now. I mean, Isak Paredes could be nah. solid. Get the Contreras brothers to go up against each other. Oh, I guess one can't, but get Will, ah, dude, William that's in so there. Disappointing. William would be electric. Or just have a Dodgers home run derby. 
Just have like Muncie, Tay Oscar, Mookie, uh, Otani. Tay Oscar would be great. <laughs> Otani, uh, Mookie would be great. <laughs> you you got to limit it to two players. If you got two players per team, wow. if you Otani do and Tay Oscar is who I would pick for that, a derby. I agree. Or maybe Muncie. Tay Oscar for Muncie. sure. Tay, I don't think Tay Oscar's ever done it, and he'd be really fun. To, I think he would hit a lot. I think he would be a fun player. He would. Get a lefty BP guy. Just let him do his thing. Let him go to town. He's trying. He's trying to. He's trying to make my prophecy come true. He's <laughs> he's doing his damnedest. He's got eleven. He's doing his best. It's Only just, it, two behind Shohei now. Maybe Shohei will have like Shohei. you know he'll need like a few games off one week and then Teoscar can face a couple more lefties and. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, maybe that'll be part of the game plan for most teams. Just throwing lefty against the Dodgers, <laughs> throw your lefties against them. It's possible. I mean, I'd be, sh- dude, it'd be in- insane to me if your prophecy comes true. But my God, if it does, you're on to something. Hey, he's like, at least he's made me look not dumb for like the first however many weeks, two months almost of the season. <laughs> <laughs> I need a lot more people to make me not look dumb because I do a great job myself. <laughs> What's like, oh, what do you think oh, is the you, Phillies will finish under 500? The oh. worst. Yeah. I'm like, what do you think has been like your worst preseason take? Uh, mine's probably picking the Cardinals to win the NL Central. <laughs> I don't know what was in that my one's brain. pretty awful. I don't remember wh- what who I chose. I feel like I chose the, them too. I think you did. We both did. I'm pretty sure. So, I mean, it was such a crapshoot. I mean, I can't really blame you on that one. Who could have saw Jordan Walker being sent back down? Who could have saw the fall off for Paul Goldschmidt as as hard as we have? And it's not like Nolan Arenado has been amazing. Nolan Gorman hasn't really been hitting. I thought he'd mash this year. But I guess, I guess it would have to be the Phillies finishing under 500 from my bold prediction video. That or this is going to hurt your feelings, but Vlad hitting 50 bombs. <laughs> and those were not meant to be super serious, but I still have to address them. Yeah, I mean, right? there's also like... Because I did make them. They're, they're, you know, hot takes, but at the same time, there's like a chance. There's a chance some of these could happen. Yeah. You know, a better chance than us. We both took also the Blue Jays to finish second in the East, I'm pretty sure. And that's not looking like. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, oh, we did not put the Rays up there. uh, From what I recall, I don't think I put them up there higher than third, which is aging very well. I think. Okay. We talked about our bad, bad predictions. But what are some that are looking pretty good that you've made or I've made? I mean, I still, I still believe that Teoscar can do it. Uh, it'll come down to, it'll come down to it. He'll be within, within four, I think, within four or five. With it, wow, okay. If he, if he doesn't, so he's gonna hit forty home runs. Okay, hey, hey, he could. I'm not. That's what I'm. I'm not trying to say. I'm trying to. I'm not trying to knock it. But he, he will have to hit forty. I believe <laughs> he um, will at least have to hit forty. Yeah, man, I think maybe picking the Yankees to win the East, like a lot of people, like everybody was just like, oh, the Orioles are going to run away with it. And like the Orioles could still, like they're only, they're like right behind them. Um, but I st- like, I still think the Yankees will take that division. Um, I did pick, I, I think I did pick Cleveland to win the Central. So that's I looking don't, good. I don't- that's looking really good. I did not really see that coming. Uh, it's it's kind of nuts, actually. It's very nuts how good they've been doing. Let's see what else. I yeah. will say. Yep. Oh, yeah. That one is looking very, very good. I've thrown a couple out there in my bold prediction video that – are looking pretty good that I'm kind of surprised. Jordan Hicks being an all-star is looking really nice. Man, he has been insane. <clears throat> He's been really, really good. Uh, Chris Sale getting Cy Young votes. Looking really good. 
Um, the Rays finishing under 500. Yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Um, Ellie De La Cruz, 40 40. Could be close. It'll be very close. I would say probably like th- if be it was 30, 35. 60, 30, 70. Yeah. <laughs> 35, 105. <laughs> That it's just I don't know if we can make milestones with five at the end of the numbers. Okay, Thirty, you know, like I, I don't know. Thirty one hundred. <laughs> Thirty one and hundred. I'm like Thirty one. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I did. I was saying, uh, Jose Barrios is going to get some Cy Young votes, and uh, it's looking not. Bad. It's looking pretty good. What is the looking most? Pretty good. Trying to look like the most home runs. Ricky Henderson. He had a 28 home run, 87 stolen base season. Yeah. I was looking, uh, I was looking at 100 steel seasons, seeing like how many home runs the highest player was hit. And no one hit more than like nine. Oh, uh, 10. My bad. There, yeah. Ricky Henderson did have the 10, 10. 130. Yeah. Led the team, Which led the league in walks, insane. too. Interesting. Crazy. OPS plus of only 122. You would think that, well, I mean, stolen bases are not included in OPS plus or OPS. I wonder what his war was that year. Let's see. What year was that? That was the 1982 season. What was his wins above replacement? 6.7 B war. I feel like that's kind of low. You hear a ridiculous number like that, you're thinking like, it's got to be eight, right? Got to be eight at least. 6.7. Ooh, he never quite hit 10. He had two 9.9 seasons. <laughs> Damn. Damn, that's still nuts, man. I didn't realize he had as much career wins above replacement as he did. Uh, 111.1. <clears throat> what a what a career, dude. Crazy. What a, an absolute career. Dude, let's bring him back so we can hit three bombs and get 300 homers. <laughs> bring A-Rod back then. We can do that. Let him go. Uh, okay. Yeah, let him hit four, get to 700. I was like on a huge... I, I was all about that. Oh, just imagine so absolutely all about if you wouldn't have missed a year and a half. <laughs> True, dude. We might be looking at like the home run king. I mean, he even came back and hit 33. That's nuts. He was like, what, 40? 39? 39, yeah. That's pretty wild, dude. That is just nuts. Baseball, man. It's happening. We are slowly Love baseball. We're what? 50, not quite 50 games in about a quarter of the way through a yeah. little over. A little bit over, a little bit over. Things are crazy. It's going to be interesting to see where we're at halfway through or by the all-star break in July. Got about what? Like six, seven weeks until then. It's going to be interesting. We'll have That's- to do like leading up to it. Maybe besides the the obvious starters, but like the fill, filler yeah. teams, all star predictions. Um, I'm down. I would love love that. There's gonna be. I think there's gonna be some really like random people on this all star team this year, guys. There really we are have man. predicted before the season. Oh, um, I didn't mean to ask. It is a trade related question. My, it's been a hot topic kind of lately. Is Mason Miller going to get traded this year? And if he does, who do you think fits the landing spot? Oh, man. He'd look good in Blue Jays. Blue. <laughs> I feel like you need to get bigger issues. Uh, I mean, we have the worst Mason bullpen bats. in the entire league also. <laughs> True. So Would we, you address the bullpen or the bats first? Mm, that's tough because, yeah, I don't know. Like, we need a lot of bats. Like, one bat won't do it. If we can get, like, Mason Miller and, like, 
Brent Rooker do or something. That'd be solid. Um, to have to, I feel like you'd have to give up quite a bit. Yeah, whatever. They got control. That's true. Who else has been like they got some guys that have been hitting the ball okay? Or maybe not. They've been cold lately. They've yeah, been very cold. I don't know. I don't know. Um you can any team I think can always use a guy like Mason Miller, like you like a an insane bullpen arm. Yeah, he's just been unreal. Like man. the Orioles? Like imagine if the Orioles I would, uh, like, That's where I'm thinking too. Who's been closing games for the Yankees? Clay Holmes. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. unless something recently happened, he hasn't allowed a run yet. Yeah. A zero right. ERA. Clay Holmes, right, 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 right. Yeah, he's good. He's good. Yeah, he's been solid. Yeah, I mean, with like Kimbrel's kind of really dropped out of that closer spot. Um Baltimore would be a good fit for sure. Yeah. Baltimore. Um, Philly would probably be a pretty decent landing spot. Uh, what's Texas been doing? Or, I mean, that's inner division. I don't know if they'd do that. But they always, they seem to always need pitching. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's so hard because, like, I feel like... He's a guy that it's kind of early to trade him. Like, team very much like, so. He'll be a. He's a like the perfect deadline guy, because he also I think teams that are looking into a guy like that kind of want to see if he can, if he'll keep it going for another month or two. Um, yeah, I think which, it's even early in his career. Like, I don't. If I'm Oakland, I don't think I trade him. Yeah, unless you get the right package. And it would have to be a very, very big package because I feel like he is what four more years after this one of control. Oh, probably. That's yeah. a hell of a lot. Just a hell of a ton. Be interesting though. I, I mean, I love me some trades. Love me some trade deadlines. Oh man, it'll be. Yeah, it's this the season's gonna be interesting. Already has been. And it's just gonna be more fun, I think, as the year goes on. We'll see who can turn it around, who starts to fall off. Ugh, so many things can happen. Endless possibilities. Endless. And we'll be around to give our take. Oh yeah. We won't we won't take too many of these three week breaks. <laughs> nah. Nah, we won't. We will not do that. We'll figure Hopefully it out. Wow. Ah, we'll yeah. The show. But yeah, unless you have anything else to add for today, I think that about wraps uh, it up on my end. Yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think I have anything else either. It's been a great time. Been yeah. a great. It's been. It, it's one of the more interesting seasons I've seen. I feel yeah. like. I don't know if it's because we're paying closer attention, but mm. it's just been weird. Yeah, it's just been in weird. A good way. Little, a lot of yeah, sort of unexpected things so far. So far, very much so. I dig it. I absolutely dig it, for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> I dig most of it, except for how bad my team is. So, <laughs> yeah, the, but I'm still sad. gonna be a very fan, sorry. and we're still gonna cheer for them. And we'll just, you know, we'll just keep being mad. We'll hope and pray that our city connect jerseys are so good that it makes me forget how bad we've been playing. Um, <clears throat> but we'll see. We'll see. Best of luck. <laughs> I hope it does work out. Oh, well, all right, everyone. Thank you as always for watching, listening, uh, finding us wherever you find your podcasts and, you know, we'll be back soon. More MLB takes and commentary. Later. Bye. Bye. Bye.